I did something so incredibly stupid in the making of this video that I have to tell on myself. But I'm not going to tell you what it was right now because you might stop watching. Rather, I have hidden it like an Easter egg in the middle of the video, so stay tuned to find out what it is. Hey there, folks. How you doing today? Welcome back to the channel. Bear with the background racket. Let's not let it interfere with the fun that we have in store for you here today. Out here on the table, you'll see we have two rifles that you might not have seen on this program before, although they have both been back here on the wall for a little while now. We haven't talked about them much on this platform. We're not going to talk about them much today. The reviews for both of these rifles will be coming up in the very near future, but we're not here to talk about them today. Rather, if you look here, you see the box, you see the optic mounted up on top. That's what we're here to talk about today. This is the Advocate by Gideon Optics. If you're not familiar with Gideon Optics, neither was I up until recently when I saw an interview between Mike Branson from Gideon Optics and Ian McCullum. I think it was on his regular Forgotten Weapons channel. It might have been on a B-side channel. I don't remember, and I'm not going to go back to look. But suffice it to say, they were at SHOT Show, and they were discussing the new LPVO by Gideon Optics. And I was so impressed by the interview that Mike Branson gave with Ian McCollum. Typically, when you're dealing with Far East import budget-level optics, having somebody to represent that company that really seems to have a theoretical working knowledge of what it is they're talking about is the exception, not the rule. So when I heard Mike get on there and in layman's terms explain the optic, its abilities, and its limitations, I knew I had to talk to this guy. So I reached out to him via email. I told him who I was. I told him what it is that I do. And then I didn't hear anything. Well, turns out he was searching through the urine-scented back alleys of the emails that he receives for requests for free stuff, and he came across my optic, did a little background snooping, and after watching my Siley Wolf 2 optic review, learned that I have astigmatism. So when he reached out to me, he asked me what my familiarity was with prism optics, which I told him I have used them. My, limit, my experience is somewhat limited, however. He told me about the advocate and offered to send me one. So here we are. Now, with that in mind, looking at it, it doesn't look much different than a traditional red dot optic that you might see mounted on top of a modern sporting rifle. However, for those of you that are very astute, you'll notice that it kind of looks like the base is backwards. That is important to something we're going to talk about here in a minute. It is backwards to what you would typically see on an optic like this, especially if you were running it alongside like a 3X magnifier. However, it is not backwards. If it bothers you so much that it is canted in reverse, as the optic has an Aimpoint T1 style base on it, you can simply unscrew it, turn it around, and have it angled the other direction. More on that later. But before we go any deeper into this, I'm now going to cover some of the advertised specs of the unit so that we don't uh, forget to cover anything that's real important. So bear with me while I throw this up on the screen. The Gideon Optics Advocate gives you a micro prism precision optic that will help you to improve precision and accuracy while avoiding the bulk of traditional high performance optics. This 1 by 20 millimeter prism scope provides a 79 foot field of view at 100 yards and is parallax free out to the same distance, giving you the clear picture you need for tighter groups. With adjustable brightness, windage, and elevation, this fully featured scope has an etched reticle for power free aiming and up to 30,000 hours of service life for an illuminated reticle utilizing our state of the art emitter system. Shoot better with the prism scope you can count on. Made with a 6061 T6 aircraft aluminum chassis to stand up to field use, the glass etched fully multi-coated lens helps reduce the impact of astigmatism on your aim and can be used either unpowered or with a bright reticle overlay. Advanced triangle within circle reticle for quick target acquisition at short to intermediate distance. Designed to be shockproof to 1000 Gs of force, Waterproof for 30 minutes to 1 meter of submersion, that's an IPX7 compliant rating, and fogproof to give you a crystal clear tactical view in inclement conditions. 
Windage and elevation are adjustable up to 90 MOA each at one MOA per click. Adjustable brightness has eight daytime settings and two night vision compatible settings. Powered by a single CR2032 for up to 30,000 service hours, thanks to our battery saving technology, motion activated illumination powers the emitter off after four minutes without movement, then instantly powers back on when moved. Features a shooter friendly 85 millimeter eye relief, parallax free to 100 yards for a 79 foot field of view that keeps you on target, easily mounts to any 1913 Picatinny type rail. So now we've talked about what it is. We've talked about the mount. Let me tell you, for starters, the dumb thing that I did with it. Well, we're waiting. For starters, when I first picked up the optic, I took it out of the box. One of the things I noticed about it right away is it didn't come with one of those little rubber covers that you're going to lose. I thought that was actually kind of nice because I tend to lose those, so I'm not worried about them. I took it out of the box. I looked at it. Didn't really do much with it. I was in here in the shop and there's so much stuff going on on the wall behind me that it's not really a good place to aim a reticle to look through it. So I just kind of threw it on top of the Sub 2000 and called it a day. Well, the next time I came out here, I picked it up and I was looking through it and it's like, what in the world? Man, this reticle is upside down. I didn't have a lot of time to mess with it, but after moving it around and looking through it for a while, I said, eh. You know, thinking, you know, Chinese import, maybe it's poor quality control. I don't know. I'll look into it later. I didn't have time right then. So I put it down and I almost forgot about it, but it was bothering me in the back of my mind. So I reached out to Mike, but at the same time, I couldn't quit thinking about it. So when I got back home, I picked it up. And the first thing I noticed was the diopter adjustment was on the front. I looked, I said, you big dummy. I had it mounted backwards. And that's where this reverse can't mount really threw me for a loop. I haven't seen an optic that's mounted that way, at least not personally, haven't messed with one. So naturally, when I put it on the rifle, I pointed it the opposite direction. So when I was looking through it and saw the upside down Chevron, it's because I was looking at it upside down. So I flipped it around the opposite direction. Lo and behold, it worked like it was supposed to. I'm an idiot. End of story. Let's get it over to the range and see how it performed. So as you can see there, I had the optic mounted on top of my kel Sub-2000 Gen 3, which I haven't even talked about here on the channel yet. There is a review coming up on that one in the very near future. I had it at my local gun range. They have steel plates at 25 and 50 yards. Zero problem whatsoever taking out those targets with the uh, little Sub-2000 with the Gideon uh, Advocate optic. Now, heeding the advice of Mike Branson, I chose not to power up the illumination. For the bulk of the shooting that I did with it, I was doing it with just the grayed out uh, etched reticle. I didn't have the illumination on and it worked really, really well. That is super important because one of the biggest issues I have with a red dot style optic is if the battery goes dead, you're screwed unless you have a set of flip up backup iron sights. So do you still need a set of backup iron sights with something like this? I'm not going to be the one to make up your mind for you, but just know that you don't have to rely on a button cell battery in order to be able to use your optic. I thought that was huge. Speaking of the backup iron sights on this rifle, after I was done with the Sub-2000, I switched it over to this Bear Creek upper, which, so that nobody comes by and tries to Christy gnome my dog, this is a 14 and a half inch upper, but the flash hider is pinned and welded making it part of the barrel, bringing the overall length to 16 and a quarter inches. 
I hate the fact that I have to include that in the verbiage of this video, but it is what it is. I took it out to the range using my Caldwell lead sled as a rest. I wasn't really seated into it with bags or anything. As you can see here, While the camera that I had sitting next to me in the video could not see the 22 caliber holes on the white paper at 100 yards, if you look right here, you'll see a group that was about that big. It was like four inches this way, three and a half inches this way. Not bad for a 14 and a half inch barrel with surplus Lake City 55 grain with a one power reticle with my eyesight. Now, there's nothing special about this rifle. It, it does have the PSA EPT trigger on it, but that's a story for another day. But there's, there's nothing with this platform that lends to exceptional accuracy. So if the average shooter can hold a group this big at 100 yards with a one power prism scope, just imagine what somebody that actually knows what they're doing could do. So uh, things that I want to point out, I may have mentioned them earlier, but I'll point them out again. Uh, the adjustments on this reticle are one MOA per click. So at 100 yards, every click you give the adjustment is one inch. So that's two clicks at 50 yards or four clicks at 25 yards. So just know that it is less fine of a movement than you would have on a traditional rifle scope, but it's par for the course for an optic like this. The shake awake feature works as intended. The mount being backwards it's actually kind of grown on me. I'm not running a magnifier with this. If I was running a magnifier with it, I would turn the base around the opposite direction. I would show you how to do that on here, but I'm going to do you one better. Mike Branson, the guy that I was telling you about, the brains behind this thing, he actually did a video called Care and Feeding of Your Advocate over on Gideon Optics channel. It's 24 minutes long, so you're going to want to get you a frosty beverage before you sit down to watch it. But just understand that he covers all the ins and outs of that stuff, so I'm not really going to go too deep on it. What I can tell you is for my eyesight, which typically when I look at a red dot, with this eye, I see a starburst that goes this direction. With this eye, I see a starburst that goes this direction. And the reason for that is I have had refract... Let me try that in English. I have had refractive surgery on both eyes. Before that, I had astigmatism. So... My vision is good enough that I don't need glasses for most things, but I get the starburst anytime I look at bright lights. So when I'm looking at the laser red dot inside of an optic, I get a little starburst around it. And that prevents me from really being able to utilize the fine aiming point that some people can see with those conventional red dot optics. Not the case with the Gideon Advocate. I was able to see that little point to the triangle really, really well. So well, in fact, as I pointed out there, you know, that's not a bad group for open sights at 100 yards, even by my standards. Uh, is it the right optic for you? Man, I don't know. At the price, you can't really go wrong with it. I think Mike mentioned in his video that he prefers the green one. I would probably prefer the green one just based on my own experience with things like this. But can I see myself picking up a couple of these things for some of the weapons that I have here on the wall? Absolutely. I think it's a great deal. If you haven't heard of Gideon Optics in the past, jump over to their website, check them out, go over to their channel, see the stuff they have to offer, and let me know down below what you think. Have you seen one of these? Have you never heard of them like I had never heard of them? Let me know down below. Let me know if there's something that I left out of this video that you wanted to see. Until next time, take care and God bless.